Leave no child behind in the fight against human trafficking. That is the theme for World Day Against Trafficking in Persons, where we this morning shine your spotlights. As we discuss World Day Against Trafficking in Human in Persons uh, on July 30th, I want to welcome the Director of the Counter Trafficking Unit, Alan Miguel, and the Deputy Director, Dane Marie Marshall. Good morning to you and welcome back to the morning show. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for having us. How are you doing this morning? We're good. Yeah? Mr. Oh. Miguel, let me start with you. Uh, tell us a bit about the work of the Counter Trafficking Unit. The Counter Trafficking Unit was born out of a UN Convention Against Transnational Crime. And there are some protocols that was attached to that convention. Mm -hmm. Out of that, um, those protocols, we, um, the idea was to get rid of all form of modern day slavery. Right. So we had the, we incorporated it, incorporated it into our law through the Counter Trafficking or Trafficking in Persons Act, mm -hmm. and that established the Counter Trafficking Unit. So the Counter Trafficking Unit really is the country's response to trafficking in persons in Trinidad and Tobago. All right. So, um, Ms. Marshall, tell me about some of the activities that the Counter Trafficking Unit has planned to recognize this um, UN World Day Against Trafficking in Persons. Uh, definitely. Well, just before um, we had uh, a spoken word competition, mm -hmm. and we engaged secondary schools with a partnership with the Ministry of Education, the Ministry of Youth and National Service, mm -hmm. the International Organization for Migration, UNICEF, and we came together and we really developed a program that engaged the young people in the topic of leave no child behind in the fight against trafficking, a mm -hmm. spoken word competition. And I'm pleased to congratulate Mr. Sai Oliveri of the Bishop Anesty um, High School, Tobago. Mm -hmm. as she's our first winner of our competition because nice. we intend to have more of it. And as we move into July 30th, the, the counter trafficking unit is having an art exhibition at Neil Fleurs on the 31st of July and 1st of August. But we are, of course, having a gala, and that would be a gala which will incorporate our, our partners. And the exhibition really is from artists um, from our migrant community and, of course, our local artists. We have partnered with the Art Society of Trinidad mm -hmm. and Tobago in this venture. Nice. Tell me, what do you hope the impact of these things are? Because you're talking spoken word, we're talking art. Uh, what do you hope the impact of these things would be on trafficking and persons? Trinidad is culture. Trinidad is the art. <laughs> and we have to now begin to incorporate um, mechanisms by which we make the public aware. And I believe through the arts we could do that here. Yes, have that conversation in, in important rooms and things, so people know that the arts are important. I just check in to I, see. I'm, I'm sure the director will tell you <laughs> that I do. <laughs> All right, Mr. Director, can you give us an idea of what the, the human trafficking statistics in Trinidad and Tobago look like? <laughs> statistics. <laughs> Stubborn thing. <laughs> yes, um, we, um, we are seeing about, about, was it about 70 cases last yeah. year? Mm -hmm. And many of them went before the courts and so on. But the idea is that moving forward, because we are now off the watch list, so the idea now is to strengthen the response to trafficking in persons mm -hmm. by improving our detection rate, mm -hmm. by improving our victim care, so that the impact will be much greater. We are not satisfied where it is now, so it is really a, a, a hard effort, a hard slog to bring it to where we want to go, because we want to come off that tier two and go to tier one. Yeah, so I love that you mentioned the, the victim support as well, because yeah. I'm, I'm interested to find out, you know, how do you guys protect the victims? Uh, how do we intervene in situations of human trafficking? Once, once we um, have, this, have declared a person a victim of trafficking, mm -hmm. then the law requires us to do certain things in relation to that person. We have to protect them, we have to house them, we have to feed them, we have to clothe them, and ensure, most of all, ensure that we don't put them in circumstances where they are re-traumatized from the ordeal that they have suffered. Mm -hmm. So it's a lot of work, it's a lot of work. We require shelters, you know, secret locations and mm -hmm. things like that. But we, um, that is a responsibility. We have a duty of care yeah. to a person who is declared a victim of trafficking. Is there a timeline for this duty of care? No, um, well, until perhaps final disposition before the court. Okay. But uh, in many occasions, the person can stay on and in fact 
assimilate themselves into the society, mm -hmm. even after they have given evidence before the court and assisted us in perhaps securing more convictions. All right. Uh, who's, who's most at risk for human trafficking? Children mm -hmm. and our women. And we're seeing a prevalence of vulnerable children, migrant children, becoming victims of, of trafficking in, in persons. Um, we continue as a directory to really hammer in this word vulnerability and understanding that vulnerability is in every aspect, even our local children. There is a significant vulnerability in insecurities with our teenage population, you know. So once a predator is determined to find prey, they will look for the vulnerable, mm. right? So we are really, this is, this is mechanisms by which we really want to adopt an awareness with the public, and especially for our parents to have conversations with your children, have conversations with them in a way that um, is meaningful. Huh? What sort of conversations we should be having with your children? Social media, it was not what it, we, we didn't have social media. Uh, our social media was outside on the block. We <laughs> was like, men outside on the road. Right, we didn't have social media. And um, there must be conversations because you will sit in rooms with parents and you'll say, um, some would say, I don't, I don't want my child with a phone. And another one would say, I need my child with their phone mm -hmm. because I need to communicate with them. So the conversation would be, who do we communicate with? How do we communicate? And what is a response? What is responsible communication? Mm -hmm. You know, so um, what is also prevalent is trafficking in persons. Really, doesn't the recruiter really seldom is a stranger, mm. right? So we need to know. We, we are observing trends as a, as a directorate, and we are now in a pro process of coming out and letting the public know what you see in the block, the the blockbuster movies, mm -hmm. huh? Mm -hmm. is not what trafficking looks like now. Mm -hmm. So we need to really have that conversation with our children. Tell us what it looks like now, because people might have an idea that, you know, what they see on TV as, as you know, a man in a panel van pulling up and, and pulling in the van, and that, that may not necessarily be the case. Mm -hmm. It's sometimes uh, way more smooth than that. Well, that may yeah. be the case in some, in, in some, in some okay. cases. Eh? But um, you see, we spoke about the... the the um, Facebook platform and the digital platforms right. and so on. While it may be a convenience, I mean, to run your household and so on, that is a dark place. Mm -hmm. And it is there that the predators and they, they look in the dark. And they, you know, they create a, a scenario, they paint a picture of a beautiful life. Yes, you can come over. We have the, the, the vulnerability of the Venezuelan migrants. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And they allude to come across here with the promise of jobs and the promise of a, of a good life. Mm -hmm. So sometimes it's a boat and a panel van and, you know, driving through mm -hmm. just and end up in a spa or a bar. Mm -hmm. That is the reality of it. I'm sorry, but that no, is the truth yeah. about it. I mean, it. Uh, you have anything to be sorry for unless you're involved in it. <laughs> but um, if that is the reality, that is yes, what it is. is, that yeah. is how, do we, how do we... Uh, teach children to identify these these situations? How do we teach people in general to identify uh, when you might be some red flags, you know what I mean? But if the story is too good to be true, most likely it is not, yes? People are not going to give you anything out here for free. There's a mm. price to everything. And the predators and the they are looking. They are looking to exploit vulnerabilities, especially persons who want nice, like shiny things, and mm -hmm. you know they like likes on Facebook, and they like to be in the in crowd. Mm -hmm. They become very vulnerable. Quite mm -hmm. apart from the migrants, you have a local population that, you know, is showing some vulnerability, and that's the reason why we are here, spreading the message: be careful. Yes, mm -hmm. pay attention to your children. And <laughs> might I add, I'm. Suspicious about all the missing people and so on that we have in China, yeah. all these young pe persons, yes? I'm not going to make any predictions or pronouncements on it, but yeah. certainly it's something to be concerned of. So, I, I love that you brought that up because I've been wondering about that as well, right? And mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, cu I'm curious to know if it is that the counter trafficking unit is working with the, I mean, the TTPS. I know you're a, you're a part of the, the Ministry of National Security, yes. same way. Uh, but uh, is there a collaboration in, in terms of that, especially when it comes to missing people? Do they check with you all to see if this might be a case of human trafficking? Certainly, certainly we do because we do communicate. We have um, police officers who are part of our authorized officer structure. Right. But I think that um, we need some stronger engagement in that regard because because I've noticed it and, you know, it's an, I have a niggling suspicion about it. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, you know, I intend, I told the deputy that we are to engage that area of um, young people. 
who just go missing and we are not sure if they are coming back or otherwise. Yeah, because it, there's a perception that we are a destination country, but we might just have become a source country. Mm. What does that mean for us if we become a source country? We need to really speak with our children because it's, it's vulnerability. It's the promise of a better situation. Mm -hmm. So we need to have those conversations, very strong conversations. If people want to get in touch with, with the, the CTU, how do they do so? How, um, what is the best way to contact you all? And what sort of information should they be bringing to you all? Most definitely, um, well, we have a hotline, on hotline, anonymous hotline. And I know we, we sit in a position right now in our country where we are afraid. Mm -hmm. uh? So there is confidentiality attached to the counter trafficking unit. You will hear the director speak about our unit having vetted and polygraphed officers, and we hold confidentiality at the highest esteem in our operations. And we, you can contact us via hotline 800 4 ctu 800 4288 And we recognize that the population needs to really <laughs> know how to contact us and we have gone through a process of really developing billboards i'm proud to announce some of our billboards will be up from months as quick as sunday mm -hmm. one will be up and that is in collaboration and partnership with the interclub um and of course we will be having some wrapped buses okay. and that is in of course another partnership with the undp mm -hmm. so we are engaging the population in a way that we are putting the message out there you can reach us at 800 for ctu Just for transparency's sake, how often are these officers vetted? How often are they, they polygraphed and we keep up to date to them? Because, I mean, I could come in now, like you come in for a job and everything is great and I'm okay, and along the way, somewhere along the way, things could change, right? Mm -hmm. So how often are these persons vetted? No. You say about, about three years. Yeah. Three years. Because uh, an authorized vet, officer yeah. has a period. A period, right? yes. Yeah. Yeah. So. so, yeah. Yeah, so the re-engagement will be vetted again. Yeah. Okay, so yes. every time you re-engage yeah. with your yeah. your new contract, yeah, yes. you will be Certainly. okay, be vetted again. All right, so guys, uh, if you want to be able to do your part, you just have to reach out eight hundred four CTU. That's your phone number to call. Absolutely confidential. Absolutely, Absolutely. confidential. And you can report any and you can report suspicions. You can report Certainly. Of course, Certainly. Yes. any information. We will build from the information mm -hmm. and develop an investigation. And no matter how small it may appear, because yeah. we may have we may have intelligence that we marry that and That's create right. a, mm -hmm. a brighter picture yeah. for us in terms of, you know. Yeah. yeah. Now I remember last year, I believe it was the Minister of National Security announced our first uh, human trafficking conviction. Yes. Since then, have we had any more? No, but we are we are ready and raring <laughs> to do more. What 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 is what is the is the challenges that we're facing? What are the challenges that we're facing? Well, we are not. We are at this place where our judiciary is has, is moving. Mm -hmm. It's yes. moving in a direction where we'd be able to churn out co convictions faster. Mm -hmm. So we are waiting. We are in wait. We have matters that are are ready. They are in the sufficiency p um, part, and we feel as though a conviction is in short in coming. Okay. And I, I only ask that, that because is. I know, say, I know, I only <laughs> ask because I know it was a, it was a huge announcement, of and I know that I mean it wouldn't be the only person who would have been arrested or charged as yes. the case may be. Yes. And if it is that we want to encourage people to come forward with the information, yes. you know, I just wanted to get an idea as to where the because sometimes the, the police can do all the work and the hard work and collect all the evidence and they go to court and it stay there for ten years. Yeah, we, you know, the court is realigning itself, You're right? So that matters of trafficking in persons can run smoothly yeah. through the court, fast okay. track through the court. Mm -hmm. And we understand why that is necessary, mm -hmm. because this is a special type of crime. Eh? Mm -hmm. You have a whole, a whole um, unit dealing especially with, with um, human trafficking. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you don't want your victims and they to be languishing outside. Well, exactly. That's right. And that's, yes. why, that's also yes. part of why I asked that, because we, we've seen so many reports now of people yes. who are in, in, in state protection mm -hmm. and they've been there for how many ever yeah. years right. waiting on the case to call in some cases. But right. trafficking in persons investigations are victim-centered investigations. Yeah. Yes. And that is what we want people to understand. We focus primarily on the victim in mm -hmm. the process of our investigations, ensuring mm -hmm. that psychologically they are ready to give us the statements, ensuring that they, as direct indicated, food, shelter, clothing, vocational, technical advancement. Mm -hmm. We are victim-centered.
when we approach. And so rehabilitating victims as well, taking care of victims Definitely. and making sure they're ready to re-enter society yeah. after they have already yeah. um, given mm -hmm. test, after they testified yeah. against yes. the, the persons involved. Mm -hmm. In fact, we are moving now, we are moving now to a more humanitarian-centered approach mm -hmm. for persons and they who may be declared victims of trafficking because sometimes they come with their own culture yeah. mm. and sometimes we, we impose our culture on them and next thing they, you know, they find that you know, this is uncomfortable. Yeah. Yeah. So we are starting to look at that in a more scientific way now. Mm. So persons of who may be of Latin American origin, their mm. cuisine and everything is different. Yeah. Yeah. So if you can get them in a shelter to do their own cooking and, you know, and then their vocational um, Things that we are doing now, computer literacy, foreign language, and so on. Yeah. So it's a more humanitarian across the board approach because we understand that the comfort of the victim is necessary for determination yeah. before the court. Yeah. Most definitely. Yes. Well, guys, on July 30th, uh, we observe World Day Against Trafficking in Persons. This year, the theme is No Child Left Behind. Do your part. 804 CTU is the number to call. If you have any suspicions, anything to report to the counter trafficking unit, feel free to give them a shout and they will do the rest and take it from there. Let me say thank you very much to the director of counter trafficking unit, Alan Miguel, for joining us this morning, as well as the deputy director of the counter trafficking unit, Dana Marie, Dane Marie Marshall. Thank, Thank you, you. ladies <laughs> and gentlemen. Do enjoy the rest of your day. Thank, Thank you. you. All right, guys, we take a quick break and we come back with one in our morning show. Stick around.